All right, so for the last video for this chapter, I'm going to talk a little bit about the observable list interface. So this is going to be a, um, a an interface that is implemented by certain classes or objects of certain classes that are capable of firing an event handler. So they will fire an event uh, any time an item in that list should change. So if you're given a set of items in a list, if one of those items changing causes an event to be fired, meaning that we can set up an event handler and then actually uh, register that event and allow some kind of behavior to occur, uh, then that indicates that there's an observable list being implemented. Uh, to give you an example of this, some of the containers that we've looked at in this chapter so far are actually going to be uh, things that implement the observable list. So examples of this include things like the HBox and the VBox. Uh, for the particular example that I'm going to be using in a moment, we'll be taking a look at the HBox and being able to actually extract the items uh, within the observable list that comes with that HBox container. Uh, the next thing I want to go ahead and take a quick look at though, uh, before we get into the coding example, are some of the methods that are available to something that uh, is using the observable list, essentially methods that come from the observable list class. Okay, so a couple of these include things like the add method. Let's go ahead and increase that size. So we've got our add method, which can take some item that we want to add to the list. So if we've uh, extracted the observable list that comes with a, say, a container, for example, we can then go ahead and add an item. So maybe we add another control or another container uh, into that container. Uh, we also have the add all method. And so the way that we'll specify the parameters for this, we'll have this item with this dot 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 notation indicating that this could actually take uh, multiple items. So it could have one or more items that we want to add to a list. Another method that we have is clear. And the clear method, this doesn't take any uh, arguments because of the fact that it will always do the same thing, which is to just clear all of the items in that list. We have the remove method, which will take a single item. Uh, in this particular case, we want to make sure that this is an item that already exists in the list since we intend to remove it from the list. And then similar to add and add all, remove also has a remove all, that same notation. And this is used to remove one or more items from a list. We also have a set all. And the set all method is used to uh, essentially do two things at once. This will clear all of the items in the list and then replace them, uh, effectively doing an add all of all the items that we specify in that uh, list of arguments. So this is basically using the clear method and the add all method, just combining them together to create the set all method. And then we also have the size method and this is used to get the number of items that are currently in a particular list. So this is just a handful of the methods that come with the observable list class. There are also many others, a couple of which we'll be talking about a little bit in uh, the next chapter. So in chapter 13, I'll go into more depth about the observable list interface because of the fact that there's a particular control that uh, is very dependent on uh, getting some usage out of this interface and the methods that come with it. All right, so the last thing I want to go ahead and do with this, though, is to also give a quick coding example of it. So we're going to come over to our code. We're going to go ahead and make a new project or a new Java file. I'm going to call this observable list demo. Okay. And for this one, we'll go ahead and import the usual classes. So we're still going to have to import our application. We'll still have to import our stage. And we'll still have to import our scene. And then I also want to go ahead and import an HBox since this is the 
container that I want to uh, get the observable list of. So I can go ahead and add and remove items from it. And then the last thing I need is to also go ahead and get a uh, or have a, an import to be able to use labels since these will be the controls that I add to this HBox. Okay. And once we have that, we can go ahead and start making the class for this. We'll have our header. So we are observable list demo. This is going to extend our application class. We'll have our main method. So we'll have public static void main. We'll have our string arguments. Make sure that we launch. And then we'll have our start method, so we'll have public void start. And then we'll have our stage, primary stage. All right, so for the coded side of this, what I want to go ahead and do is just make a couple of labels first. So we'll have, in this case, I'm going to just make three labels that I call label one, label two, and label three. And the text for each of these, I'm going to keep fairly simple. I'm just going to say this is the first label. We'll have another label called label two. This is the second label. And then one more, label three. And this is the third label. Okay. For this, I just want to go ahead and demonstrate a how we can actually get the observable list for an HBox and then just apply a couple of methods to that observable list. So we'll go ahead and make our HBox is equal to a new HBox. Uh, this is going to uh, initially be uh, almost empty. I'm just going to go ahead and put one parameter in here, which is the amount of spacing I want to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and give this 10 pixels of spacing. Uh, this way that I can go ahead and distinguish one label from the other. Otherwise, they'd all just be kind of mashed together. So I want to kind of avoid that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to then go ahead and get this HBox. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and call a particular method on this HBox, which is get children. So by using this particular method, this is actually going to give me an observable list that includes all of the child nodes for this HBox. So right now, because I haven't actually put anything into it, as you can tell, I only specified the spacing and I've not added any controls or containers into this HBox. Uh, if I use this get children, it would effectively be, you know, empty. There are no nodes that I've put inside of the HBox. So what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get this, and then I can go ahead and use one of those methods. So I can use one of these methods on this observable list that I've gotten by calling that get children method. And the method I want to use here is going to be this add all method. So I'll do add all. And then inside of here, I'm going to put in each one of those labels that I want to add. So we're going to have label one, label two, and label three. Okay. And then the other thing I want to go ahead and do is to also apply one uh, additional method to this. So we'll do HBox. Again, we're going to get the children. So we'll uh, essentially get that observable list again. And this time I want to go ahead and apply the remove method. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and remove the first label, label one. All right. And then finally, I want to go ahead and set up my scene and my stage. So we'll have our scene is equal to a new scene object with the HBox as the root node. We can then go ahead and set up our stage. So we'll set the scene. We'll set a title for this. We'll call this observable list demo and we'll go ahead and make sure that this is being displayed all right okay so now we'll go ahead and compile this see if everything is actually set up properly so I have our observable list demo not Java we'll go ahead and try to compile that okay so we're able to compile it we'll then go ahead and run it and the expectation here is that we've added all three of the labels, but then we removed the first one. 
So as we can see, the only two labels that remain are the second and third. So have, this is the second label and this is the third label. So this indicates that the two methods that we applied to that observable list interface actually worked properly as we would expect them to. And we were able to add some content, but then also remove a little bit of content to that H box. Okay. So as I mentioned before, uh, this is just a brief introduction to the observable list interface. We'll see this in a, a little bit more detail when we get into another uh, control in the next chapter. Uh, to give you a bit of an overview, in the next chapter we're going to be covering things like styling our applications with CSS, cascading style sheets, uh, looking at a few more advanced controls. So we'll introduce uh, more things besides just our buttons, labels, and uh, text fields that we saw in this one. Uh, and in particular, as far as the observable list interface goes, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the list view control, which expands on this in a fair bit more detail.